Hello everybody, I am on TriHackMe's uh, Junior Penetration Tester Learning Path and the first one is the Pen Testing Fundamentals. And so this is just kind of giving a background of what penetration testing is and I thought I'd just kind of quickly review it for you right here. So the main thing on this section, what is penetration testing? Um, they just want you to read this section. So the main part to understand is a penetration test or pen test is an ethically driven attempt to test and analyze the security defenses to protect these assets and pieces of information. A penetration test involves the same tools, techniques, and methodologies that someone with malicious intent would use and is similar to an audit. And so you don't need to do anything here, but you just need to sit that their question is done. And then in this section, it's talking about penetration testing ethics. And this is really important because um, well, here, we'll just read it together. The battle of legality and ethics in cybersecurity, let alone penetration testing, is always controversial. Labels like hacking and hacker often hold negative connotations, especially in pop culture, thanks to a few bad apples. The idea of legally gaining access to a computer system is a challenging concept to grasp. After all, what makes it legal exactly? And so the thing that makes it legal exactly is that a penetration test is an authorized audit of a computer system's security and defenses that is as agreed by the owners of those systems. So that's pretty clear cut. You can't do it unless they give you authorization. Before a penetration test starts, a formal discussion occurs between the penetration tester and the system owner and they, f they form the scope of the penetration testing agreement. So that is, you know, they're gonna go over what systems do you, are you allowed to have access to, what systems aren't you allowed to have access to. So it could be a thing where they just want you to focus on the financial system of the accounting department and they wanna make sure that you don't have access to maybe the servers that hold research and development. So in the scope, they will specifically, the owners will specifically tell you um, what areas you're allowed to try and penetrate and what areas you're not allowed to try and penetrate. Um, so then they talk about the different categories that we have um, in the industry. There's these categories that are used, you might have heard it, white hat and gray hat and black hat. And so they give you kind of an, a description of this. So like white hack are hackers that are considered the good guys. Um, they remain within the law and use their skill to benefit others. And contrasting that is with black hat, these are the criminals that often seek to damage organizations or gain some form of financial benefit at the cost of others. And gray hat are people that use their skills to benefit others often, but they don't necessarily follow, respect the law or ethical standards all the time. They're kind of gray hat. And so the thing that makes them different than black hat is that to their perspective, um, and understanding they're using their skills to benefit other people, whereas the black hat people are just trying to get things for themselves. Rules of engagement is a document that is created at the initial stages of a penetration um, testing engagement, and it consists of three main sections. So the first section is permission. Um, this is the section of the document that gives explicit permission of the engagement to be carried out. This is to legally protect the individuals. And so you as a hacker or a penetration tester, you wanna make sure that your client um, signs that because if anything happened in the poor, you know, and you actually did breach their system and if they wanted to try to sue you, um, a verbal agreement isn't gonna protect you. So you want something that's like a signed agreement. And then the test scope is again, the specific targets um, that you're allowed to engage and which ones you're not allowed to engage. And the rules will define exactly the techniques that are permitted during the engagement. So this is like, they want you to work on phishing attacks only, but they don't want you to try to do DDoS attacks. Um, so they're gonna sell, tell you specifically what they want to see. So then we have to answer these questions below. You are given permission to perform a security audit on an organization, what type of a hacker would you be? And again, because you receive permission, you would be a white hat hacker. Question number two, you attain an organization, you attack an organization and steal their data. What type of hacker would you be? Because it's all for you. You don't have permission. You're stealing something. It's black hat. What document defines how a penetration testing engagement should be carried out? That is the rules of engagement. So again, it's just not, um, it's just not the test scope. The answer is just not the permission, it's actually all of these. This is the name of the full document is the rules of engagement. So that's the correct answer there. So then they go on to kind of just give an overview of um, penetration testing methodologies. 
um, there's these different phases of a good penetration test um, that kind of build upon each other. So first you have the information gathering phase where you're going to be collecting as much publicly accessible information about a target or organization as possible. Then there is the enumeration or scanning phase where you try to discover applications and services that are running on their systems. Exploitation is leveraging those vulnerabilities. So you spotted the vulnerability with enumeration. Maybe you spot it an uh, open port somewhere. Um, and now exploitation is trying to access that port. And then privilege escalation is that once you've exploited the system, once you're in, you try to escalate horizontally and ver vertically. You know, you try to, now that you're into a network, you try to poke around, you try to find where the servers are. Once you're in the servers, you try to find the files that have, um, you know, important information that you might want to protect or if you're a black hat to steal. And then post-exploitation. Um, this step involves a few sub-stages. This is um, really important. This is, um, you try to find out what other hosts can be targeted. So this is called pivotings. Um, what additional information can we gather from the hosts now that we are a privileged user? Cover your tracks and reporting. So, you know, if you get in, if you hack yourself in, but you're discovered and you can't cover your tracks, you're not that great of a hacker. So that's what that section is. Okay, OSSTMM is Open Source Security Testing Methodology Manual. Um, and these are various um, industry standards that you can use to, um, that show different strategies for system software and applications and communications. And so they're just kind of telling us about that, that those are resources that we can go to. Um, additionally, OWASP is the Open Web Application Security Project. It's a framework that is um, community driven and it's updated and it's just meant to test the security of web applications and services. And then there's the NIST cybersecurity framework. Um, it's used to try to help organizations better secure uh, their systems. And it kind of gives a framework of what should be done um, at all the different parts of um, an infrastructure, including your human resources. And the NCS CCAF is a cyber assessment framework that uh, uses 14 principles to assess the risk of various cyber threats that an organization's defenses um, and the defenses that they might use. And so they give you kind of the advantages and disadvantages of each. So I'll leave that to you guys to read. Let's get to the questions below. What stage of penetration testing involves using publicly available information? The answer there is information gathering information gathering. If you wanted to use a framework for pen testing telecommunications, what framework would you use? They're looking for the acronym. So that's the OSSTMM. And then what framework focuses on the testing of web applications? That is OWASP, O-W-A-S-P. So those are the answers there. Okay, the next section is white box, black box, white box, gray box penetration testing. Um, in black box, obviously they don't want you in, you're probably not inside the organization, so you don't have any knowledge of the network. Gray box, you have partial knowledge, and white box, you have full knowledge. So your understanding of your target will determine the level of testing that you perform in your penetration testing engagement. So since black box has no knowledge, you're going to test the functionality and interaction of the, of the application or the piece of software. Um, you can be interacting with an interface, the buttons, you know, seeing what the buttons do. Um, black box testing, the thing to understand is that black box testing significantly increases the amount of time spent during the information gathering and enumeration phase to understand the attack surface of the target. What do they mean by attack surface? They mean like all the points at which you might access a system. So if you're thinking of it like a building, you know, all the different doors that you might access, all the different windows that you might access. If you're thinking of a network and computers, you think in terms of all the different ports that might be open, um, all the different bugs in the Java coding of the application that might be manipulated. So that's kind of like what they're looking for. Gray box testing um, is the most popular uh, for things such as penetration testing. It's a combination of both black and white. The tester will have some limited knowledge. 
and it's often chosen for extremely well hardened attack surfaces. So if they think that they have a very well hardened attack surface and they really want it tested, they don't want to give um, the penetration testers any more information that is absolutely needed to get started. So it would be a true test. Uh, white box testing is low level. It's usually done by a software developer who knows programming and application logic. The tester will be testing the internal components of an application or piece of software, ensuring that specific functions work correctly within a reasonable amount of time. The tester will have full knowledge of the application and its expected behavior. And it's much more time consuming than black box testing. Okay, so here's the answers to the questions. You are asked to test an application but are not giving access to its source code. What testing process is this? Black box. You are asked to test a website and you are given access to the source code. What testing process is this? White box. And so here now we're gonna get to the beginning practical part of, their, um, of this module. Um, Acme, it's a fictitious business that they have, has approached you for an assignment. They want you to try and carry out the stages of a penetration test on their infrastructure. View the site and follow the guided instructions to complete the exercise. Okay, so they want us to go through the rules. They're telling us what the rules of engagement are. Let's go through the stages of a penetration test assignment for the Acme company. The stage of the penetration test is where you define three primary objectives. Cycle through the tabs below to explore these. So permission for a penetration test to be ethical and legal, both parties, the company wanting to test their application for vulnerabilities and the company conducting the pen test will sign a document giving clear permission for the intended actions. Test scope. The test scope will define what targets or environments are being tested against. For example, the client may only want you to test a part of their application and not the entire network. The rules define the type of behavior a penetration tester will employ. You may only have access to part of the application and not the entire server that hosts it. And so let's see what they have here. So these are different folders pen test engagement, and then we have an email uh, with a PDF that they're showing the rules. So this is kind of like a simulation of what it's like to get one of these rules of engagement. So now we're going to do some information gathering. The information gathering stage of an engagement is often undervalued. This stage involves using publicly accessible channels to collect intel on your target. Abby who was a, has a public profile on LinkedIn advertises that she works for Acme and even includes her email in her bio, which is a possible way we can target her work laptop and thus the company. So if they did a phishing attack on Abby, since they know her email, they might be able to get access to the network. The goal of this stage is to get a complete picture of your target. A penetration tester will try to identify user accounts, machines on their network, network shares, applications, etc. Information gathered from stage two and the engagement scope document will help in enumerating your target. So the enumeration phase is very important as your findings are used to exploit your target's systems. Let's pretend Abby from stage two made a post on LinkedIn sharing a blog post she wrote about Acme. And from this blog post, you can find Acme's web server IP and they'll show you how to, they're just kind of showing you the big overview of how um, hacking and penetration testing works. And so they'll show you how this is done. But just for the sake of this right now, you're able to figure it out and you get the her IP address. So we're going to try scanning it. And so here, they're kind of going to help us out here because we're just beginners here. They've already put scan to do um, a scan in Linux. And right here, we're going to put in the IP address that they've given. So for me, I have 96.37.50.151. And then we're going to click scan target. And it's going to start a vulnerability scan, it says. And so it's going back and forth between the target and the attacker. And it's asking what services are vulnerable. It says the web page and no login. Okay, so that's some important information. We're gonna to go to the next page. The exploitation stage involves the knowledge from your enumeration to how to identify and exploit vulnerabilities in any of their applications. 
For example, we enumerated that Acne's website in stage three and found that it was vulnerable. We could now exploit this vulnerability, thus ethically hacking Acne's website. Exploitation is the use of vulner vulnerability discovered to gain unauthorized access to an information security system or data. So let's go next. So they're kind of showing you a simulation of how that exploit might run um, running the running the commands in the terminal. Okay, post-exploitation. The post-exploitation phase starts when you gain unauthorized access. At this stage of the engagement, your main goals will be to maintain access to the system and escalate your privileges within the system to a super user or administrator user. Systems are usually set up with normal users that don't have access to various sensitive files. After this, you'll be extracting sensitive information from the system, attacking other components in the environment. Um, if the system is part of a network, you will attempt to gain access to other machines. So it's just showing that you're down here, you entered in under Abby, uh, most likely, and she's a lower privileged user. So now you're gonna try to escalate, you're gonna try to gain access, find out the names of other users and administrators and gain access to that. So you just click next. And so now is the time to do the pen test report and clearing up it occurs at the end of a penetration test. Um, and not only do you wanna write um, a form that lists details regarding any security issues you found and how to mitigate them, but um, you'll also wanna show them how to fix the flaws. And after this, you also wanna clean up the environment you've been testing where possible. For example, if you were provided access to machines or tooling by the client, you need to delete any artifacts that have been created as a result of testing. And so this is how TryHackMe works. After you do these challenges, they will have a little code right here that says THM and then brackets, and then there'll be something different inside each time. But this one says THM pen test complete. And so that's where you enter it right over here. THM pen test complete is the correct answer. And so that is it. That is how you do the pen testing fundamentals modules. I hope that was easy enough for you. I tried to get through it quickly. Um, let me know if you have any questions and good luck on your learning path.